So in summary, these five modifications can take the engine into the ballpark of about 350 to 400 wheel horsepower. Hey everyone, this is Zach with 8020 Automotive here today with a video on how to build a 350 plus wheel horsepower Subaru EJ257. The Subaru EJ257 flat four engine is best known for powering the 2004 to 2021 Subaru WRX STI. This engine delivers 300 to 310 horsepower as well as 290 to 300 foot pounds of torque. These cars and engines very quickly became popular tuners cars and naturally due to the turbocharged nature of the EJ257, the engine is capable of picking up significant power gains with just tuning and some simple bolt-on mods. Before actually jumping into some of the best upgrades, I did just want to cover the strength and upper safe limits of the EJ257 engine. So generally this engine is best left to about 400 wheel horsepower on the higher end and about 22 PSI before you start reaching the limits of the internals and block. Now those numbers are going to be a little bit lower if you are running pump fuels. You can make more power than that, but just know the more power you throw at these engines, the more risk you're accepting, especially if you don't have proper supporting mods. With that said, let's go ahead and jump in and discuss the five best upgrades to build a 350 plus wheel horsepower EJ257. This list isn't in any particular order. Number one on the list, we have tuning. Ultimately, tuning is going to be the foundation to building a more powerful STI. Tunes not only offer excellent power gains on their own, but they also help maximize power and performance gains from additional modifications. And on top of that, tuning is very important to ensure that you are keeping the engine safe and healthy, especially if you're pushing those limits. One of the most popular and best tuners for the EJ257 is going to be the Cobb access port. The Cobb access port will have a few off the shelf standard maps and running these, you can generally see power gains of about 20 to 30 horsepower and about 10 to 20 foot pounds of torque. And these off the shelf maps are a good starting point if you're just getting into modifying your STI and EJ257 engine. However, the OTS maps really aren't ideal for maximizing performance, nor are they ideal for ensuring that you have a safe quality setup, especially as you start throwing more mods at the car and start pushing the upper limits of the engine. So custom tuning is really going to be essential. The one flaw with custom tuning is that it does have to be adjusted every time you make any changes to the vehicle or throw any additional mods at the engine. And that brings us into the second mod for the STI, and that is going to be fueling and and ID 1050X injectors. Ethanol or E85 is really going to offer by far the best power gains. E85 burns a lot cooler and has numerous other benefits that really make it a lot safer and easier on the engine. So if you do have access to ethanol, that's going to be your best bet for fueling. Now E85 does require a lot more fuel flow, so that means it's time to address the fuel injectors. The ID 1050X or similar injectors are going to be a great option. Those injectors can support roughly 450 wheel horsepower on ethanol or ethanol blends. So those injectors are really going to be necessary if you're looking to hit that 350 to 400 plus wheel horsepower mark on ethanol. It's going to be a great upgrade and ultimately deliver massive power gains as well as ensuring a safer setup at a given power level. Moving on to our third upgrade, we have an intake. The stock intake on the STI is actually very efficient up to about 350 to 400 horsepower. So if you're not pushing into that ballpark, an intake is really going to offer pretty minimal power gains. Now, once you start pushing past that roughly 350 to 400 horsepower mark, an intake is going to start offering some power and performance benefits, and you can expect to see gains of roughly three to seven horsepower. And on top of that, an intake is just a very simple, inexpensive upgrade. It can also add some awesome turbo and induction sounds. Moving on to our fourth upgrade, we have downpipe upgrades. When it comes to actual bolt-on modifications, a downpipe is really going to be one of the best bang for your buck modifications. A downpipe can offer incredible power gains of about 15 to 25 horsepower, roughly the same torque. A downpipe will also offer faster turbo spool. Ultimately, the way all of this is possible is by reducing the back pressure, and that is very important on turbocharged engines specifically. Reducing 
back pressure makes the turbocharger and engine's job a lot easier. It's very important to get that air out efficiently, and as you have a larger pressure drop from pre to post turbo, that's actually what allows the turbocharger to spool and build boost. So ultimately, a downpipe is going to allow the turbo to spool faster and allow you to create a little more peak boost, which is really where those massive power gains and benefits come from. Now, when it comes to downpipe upgrades, there is one big differentiation to consider, and that is catless versus high flow catted downpipes. The ultimate goal of a downpipe upgrade is to reduce back pressure, and a catless downpipe is going to do the best job of that. Catless downpipes will be the best option for performance. However, they are illegal for the streets, and that's where a high-flow catted downpipe comes into play. A high-flow catted downpipe is going to have a much easier time passing any form of emissions testing or even a visual inspection. If you have a catless downpipe, the lack of a catalytic converter is going to cause an instant fail, and so that's where the high-flow catted downpipes really come into play. They're not going to offer quite the same degree of power and performance gains, but they're going to offer about 90% of it with the benefit of remaining legal and being able to pass any form of emissions or visual inspections. Last but not least, at number five, for building a 350 plus wheel horsepower EJ257, we have intercooler upgrades. Intercooler upgrades are a little more complex on the EJ257, and that is because the engine uses a top mount intercooler, which ultimately isn't the most efficient design for maximum cooling and reduce intake air temperatures. So really the best upgrade when it comes to the intercooler is actually converting to a front mount intercooler setup. However, this is very expensive and can be complicated. So if you're not comfortable DIYing it, that could add further expenses when it comes to paying for labor and installation of a front mount intercooler. So I'd really only recommend swapping to the front mount intercooler if you are planning on pushing 400 plus wheel horsepower. Otherwise, if your power goals are a little bit lower, but you still want better cooling, a top mount intercooler upgrade is going to be a great option. Ultimately, cooler intake air temperatures are naturally going to offer power gains. However, when it comes to peak power gains, if you're just doing a one-off glory run, don't expect to see much, if any, power gains. Really, the name of the game when it comes to intercooler upgrades is consistent performance as well as engine health. Keeping the intake air temperatures lower will reduce the chance of any sort of engine knock or detonation events. And additionally, keeping the intake temperatures lower run after run is ultimately going to lead to a car and engine that feels very consistent. Whereas if you stick with the stock intercooler, likely after you hit the gas a few times and, and really start beating on the car, car you'll likely notice that the performance slowly starts dropping, and that's because as the intake air temperatures start increasing, you're not only going to lose some power there, but the engine's also going to start backing out a little bit of timing and potentially boost to keep the engine safe and healthy. Anyway, guys, that wraps up the five modifications to build a 350 plus wheel horsepower STI. So in summary, these five modifications can take the engine into the ballpark of about 350 to 400 wheel horsepower, likely a little bit lower if you are just on pump fuels. On pump fuels, you'll probably end up closer to about 325 to 340 wheel horsepower. But again, in either case, that is starting to push the upper safe limits of this engine for the long term. So it is very important to ensure that you have a well dialed in setup. Some other things to consider that will also help add a little bit of power is a cap back exhaust, 3.5 or 4 bar map sensors, a hard inlet, the the cylinder for cooling mod and things like one step colder spark plugs. These are all great supporting mods. So again, if you really are going to push the limits of this engine and looking to go with all of these modifications, it is important to talk to tuners, talk to other experts and, and people who are familiar with this platform and make sure you are addressing all of these supporting mods and everything you can do to ensure you're keeping the engine safe and healthy at those power levels. Anyway, guys, that wraps up our video for today. If you appreciated the content, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more in the future. Thanks, everyone.